Hey and welcome to this Divi tutorial. I'm Ashley from Mad Lemmings and I wanted to give you a walkthrough and uh, show you how many of the different areas of Divi look and how easily you can create your own website with Divi. So this is a basic website that I have running on my machine here and it has Divi, the latest version, 2.5 installed. And I want to show you how you can easily set up and uh, create pages and, and your own website using Divi. So let's first jump in to the Divi overall settings which are in the menu down here under Divi theme options. And the kind of things you can do in this area are things like set up your logo or set up the uh, favicon which is the little icon that appears on the tabs. You can also set whether certain things on the side are happening, whether you have a left side bar or right side bar. Also, whether you're using uh, a fixed navigation, which is when you scroll, the navigation stays visible on the top, the menus. Otherwise, it scrolls off the screen, so you can turn that off. It's already turned on by default. And various overall settings are available in here. Um, such as your social media icons, which appear in the footer. You can also turn them on in the header, and that's in another section. And you can set up some other general layout settings, such as whether the author data and categories appear in, in blog posts and on pages. Uh, you can also add in your Google Analytics into these areas here, and various other JavaScripts that you may need to insert. So some of the very general settings for Divi are available in here. And I'm not going to demonstrate most of these because they're quite straightforward. What's really more interesting is in the theme customizer area in which Divi is quite powerful. You have a whole lot of options in terms of how your website is appearing, mainly in the header area, but also in the width of the overall page and, and certain things like that. So let's take a look at that. And with the way that WordPress works now, you get a preview of what you're seeing on the right hand panel and on the left hand panel you have all the settings you can change. So let's quickly explore some of them. In the general settings we can change some of the overall site identity. These are just the general settings that you do in WordPress anyway. So you can get to these from the WordPress settings as well. It's the name of your blog and the tagline which appears as the title. You also have the layout settings. Now this is what I was talking about in terms of how wide your website is in general. So you can see here where the hello world starts and then where the right hand sidebar search button ends which aligns with this search icon. There, are the boundaries of the page and you can decide that you want to make this bigger or smaller and so we can slide this slider. 1080 is not a bad size that fits most monitors. You could move that up to about 1200 and still be okay for most monitors. So if you have more content to display and you need a little bit more space, you can create that with this slider. And you can also change some of the spacing around the content. You can see here that the amount of space between the sidebar and the content is changing when I move this. You can also set up a specific sidebar width and we can change that and you can see it changing here. So if you want more width in your sidebar because the text appearing there is quite long. For example, recent posts have long titles in your posts, so you want more space there, you can add that. You can also change the section and the row heights. We'll have a bit more of a look at that later. When you add elements and rows to your pages in Divi, it's all done on a row by row basis. So the amount of spacing between those rows you can change as well. And some other things you can change is the overall uh, fonts you're using in the header and in the body, so the main section. The kind of colors of your text and your links you can set in here overall. And then some of the more interesting areas you might want to play around with is in the header. For example, you can have the navigation on the left in a vertical style navigation instead of on the top. You can also center the navigation which is very useful if you start to get a lot of pages because once you start to resize your website, for example, to tablet size, say about seven or 800 pixels, if you have a really wide menu and you're not using this centered layout, 
you will get problems with the menu overlapping with the logo or going onto two lines and it starts to mess everything up. So I use this particular layout when you have a lot of page items, say more than five. And it also depends on how wide the, the label is, so what you're calling the page. So you'll notice that too when you start checking out your website on, on tablets and stuff, you may need to change this if you have more than about five items here. So you can have centered, and then you can put the logo in the middle, which I don't particularly like, but you may want to do. You can also set up the overall height and colors and all of this stuff, the secondary menu, so the drop downs, if you have sub pages in your menus, you can change all of the colors, fonts, settings, letter spacing, text size, all of this stuff you can minutely control within here. So you have full power over all of these settings in here. So as I said, the customizer and the Divi customizer gives you the ability really to lay out your header, your pages, your sidebar, and also your footer. We can quickly jump into the footer down here and you can decide how many columns are in the footer, what widgets go in the footer, whether there's a menu in the footer, which is sometimes handy for linking to some of your common pages like, for example, if you're in e-commerce, you may have shipping, you may have uh, your contact page linked from there, your affiliate disclosure, your terms and conditions, all of this kind of pages you don't want in your menu, but you want them visible on every single page. So you can put these in with the footer menu, you can add an extra footer bar as well, and then you can also decide how many columns. I typically choose three, so you have a three column layout for your footer and let's make it a slightly lighter color. You can add your widgets so you can save and publish all of these changes and you can go back to your widgets which is actually under the main uh, menu in WordPress so if I get out of here I'll quickly show you that's here the widgets and then you can go into the footer area you've got footer area one two three and four we only need to use three of them because we have three columns and we can add something in for example like uh, pages and just call this pages. I don't think this is particularly useful at the moment, but let's just show you what that looks like. And then I'll open this in a new tab. And now you can see the first column of the widget area has a list of my pages, of which I only have one called sample page. And so that's the uh, customizer area for the footer. And you can also change some stuff relating to mobile, change the overall color schemes. There's default color schemes here. Uh, if you don't want to get into specifics, into CSS and changing all of the individual colors, you can use some of the default color schemes that Divi has. Of course, you'll probably want to change the header and the footer accordingly to match this stuff, which you can do in those sections up here. And that's about it really. Um, yeah, you can get to your footer widgets in here as well. Sorry, I jumped out of that before. You can do that in here too. So you can set up most of what's going on in here. Again, how the uh, blog posts are laid out. So all of your settings for Divi for your overall layout can be done within the customizer. Quite powerful. Then what's really interesting is if you want to create some pages, you can jump into the pages section and start adding default layout pages. So let me explain that a bit more clearly. Divi comes with a whole library of pages. So if we go into my sample page and we edit the sample page and it has no content at the moment or not much that's of any use. So let's just delete that. And then we'll use the Divi Builder, which you have to install separately, but comes with Divi. And then we can start adding rows, columns, elements to our pages and start making pages very quickly and easily. And if you go from the library, what you'll find if you have a particular kind of layout that you're after, for example, a company web page, you could have this as your home page. Normally I would put this on a home page, not sample page. You can see here quickly that Divi gives you all of the elements pre-set up for this kind of, you have the contact, you have the map, you have testimonials, you have projects, recent work, and so forth. You can have uh, your services in here and your main call to action on the top here, and then all of your menus, which we set up separately. So by loading the pages from the library, 
even if you don't want all of these elements, it's a very fast way to build a website. So if we go back to that library, what you can basically do is you can use one of their home pages as a basis. Um, these main page layouts are just blank, so they're not giving you much, they're just general layouts. You can have a portfolio. You can also have things like the different blog layouts and then connect that to your blog page, shop layouts. Yeah, you can do a contact page, for example. Uh, you could put your coming soon page. So say you haven't launched your website yet, you could put this on your home page with a timer and a subscribe or contact so that people could uh, keep up to date with what's going on and know exactly when your web page is going to be launched. Let's have a look at some others. Landing page, for example, which are quite good for getting subscribers or sales. So let's have a look at that. So it's a really big page with only a few elements on it selling something or trying to get people to uh, move to particular sections of your page. It's great for uh, sales. It can also be good for a home page if you don't have too much going on on your website. You can also have a maintenance mode if you're shutting things down for a particular amount of time while you're doing something The contact us. Have a look at that. That's really good for your contact page. Default contact page has the map. The contact form, which is really good for getting in touch, and then the general contact details. Obviously, you need to edit these things specifically to your location and your email address so that the contact form sends the contacts to your email and also your name and address and opening hours in here. And you can also put in something like an about page or a team page, depending. About page is generally smaller. In terms of team members, this is more about the company, not so much about the team. And then if you want to put in the team page, that's got a lot more elements to do with all of the team members here. You can see individual skills and so forth about each team member. And again, if you don't want all the elements that it's loading, you can just delete them all uh, using the crosses on all the rows. So again, you can mix and match. Not all of these are perfect for everybody. So you can just use these as a starting point. So these are the pages you can load from Divi. So what this means is that you can set up your about page, your contact page, your home page, and your blog page, all within a couple of hours if you include all the tweaking you're gonna do and changing of colors and fonts and so forth. But if you don't even do that, you could set this up within half an hour, an hour, just and the only thing you really need to do is change the text if you don't have that prepared already. And then what Divi allows you to do is add columns, rows, and elements. So you're basically working on a row by row basis. You can have full width rows, which span the whole page, or you can have rows that only span the width that we set in the settings, which was 1200. So the full width goes beyond the 1200 and the normal blue ones here go the width of the page. And then you can choose how many columns you put in there. And you can also choose what elements go in those columns. And then you can also delete things. I can just delete all of this and start from scratch, which is what we have here. We have a row with a certain amount of columns that we don't know yet. And we can decide that we want a half-half, for example, 50-50 columns. Then we can insert a countdown timer in there. And then you've got all the settings for the elements. And then you can insert uh, for example, let's just insert some text, which is quite a generic WordPress style editor. And you can add pretty much anything in here you would add in WordPress. And if we preview that, you'll see we have a standard page with a 50-50 layout. So in the first 50% we have the timer, and in the second 50% or half you have the text. And then you can edit all of that and change the colors and so forth. Then you can add another row, which is called a standard section. And you can make this one a full row with only one module. And then we can put in here a map. And then uh, we're not going to center it, but you can put in the address and save that and then preview it. You can add full width sections, sections from libraries. You can also create your own libraries of elements. You can change the order by just grabbing the elements and moving them around. You can copy them all sorts of things you can undo you can do previews while you're adding elements for example if we edit this and we click the eye here then you see what the preview looks like in mobile 
tablet and full width so that's really handy you can save this particular layout to the library so you can use it on other pages and you have lots and lots of different options you can also not use the builder completely and jump out of the builder then you lose everything you've done in here and you have a blank page then you can just make a normal WordPress page with texts links quotes whatever you don't have to use the builder so as you can see that's Divi the basics you have full layout control using the customizer and the settings and then you have full control over what elements and you can speed build web pages really fast using the pre-built layouts and the elements that they give you or modules as they call them which you can put in any kind of layout any kind of columns full width not full width all sorts of layouts and options you can change all the colors the settings the padding the images there's tons of stuff in here for you to play with you can pretty much create anything you want and I use it for a lot of my clients it's very fast it's very easy it's very modern looking and you can create some amazing results so if you want more information on that click the link that's in the video description and it'll take you straight to the Divi page where you can have a look at more videos from the makers of Divi and find out if this is for you enjoy